Hello and welcome to Talking Business with me, Ben Thompson. Let's have a look at what's coming up on the show. Prices are soaring, our incomes are being squeezed and it means a cost of living crunch. And so we'll look at what motivates us to spend and how we can make better financial decisions. I'll speak to the Chief Science Officer of the online finance tool Happy Money to find out how we can avoid making costly money mistakes. Plus, getting goods from A to B has never been harder as supply chains feel the squeeze. So we'll find out more from a top boss at FedEx. Wherever you're watching around the world, welcome to the show. And if you're worried about rising costs, you're probably not alone. Prices are rising and wages just aren't keeping up. It means our money doesn't go as far. But today we'll look at what drives us to spend and how we can make better financial decisions, especially if you are feeling the pinch. Now, most of us will have noticed prices going up. For the most industrialised nations, inflation is up by 6.6%. It is the fastest rate in 30 years. A big driver is the price of energy. That's up by over 25% in December of last year compared to the year before. So it means if you paid $80 to heat your house at the end of 2020, it now costs you $100. And those increases mean people are having to think more about money. Here's what some of them told us in New York. My rent went up just last month by $400, so that was a uh, little rough. We own a taco business, uh, Habos Tacos, by the way. So, um, but yeah, man, some, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we, we get busy sometimes, you know, especially right now, since, like you said, inflation's, there's, you know, months where everything's up and then there's uh, a couple weeks when things will be down. So it kind of goes up and down, up and down, up and down on that. But especially I feel like the middle class is the one that suffers the most. I just have to be better at budgeting and cutting out things like getting my nails done or my hair done or um, going shopping with my friends because it's important. You got to eat. <laughs> We make about 35,000 conscious decisions every day and how we spend our money is determined by some of them. But what actually influences our financial choices? Well, scarcity for one. If we're worried that the supply of something will run out, we're more likely to buy it, even if we don't need it right now. Another is what's known as delayed reward discounting when you choose smaller, more immediate purchases over larger ones that you have to wait for. So maybe buying a $20 t-shirt when you should really be saving for a holiday. And there's also loss aversion, the idea that we feel losses more strongly than gains. So if $10 falls out your wallet, you'll notice that more than if you find $10 in the street. But what does all that mean in the real world? Well, the Decision Lab uses behavioural science and economics to advise companies and governments. Its research director unpicked one example from the pandemic. Uncertainty creates stress. Um, stress taxes your cognitive resources. That means you have less resource available to tamp down the automatic thinking, which means your fast brain is going to leap in more often. You're going to be making more like automatic reflexive decisions. And so we will place more of a premium on certainty and on dependability, reliability, that kind of thing. Um, so for instance, uh, some of the campaigns we worked on with financial institutions was, you know, arrived at this positioning of like, we are here for you. So like, you know, we are your support, we're in your corner, um, because that was the kind of message that was very well aligned and resonating with where clients were at at that moment. So there's a lot of stress and anxiety at the moment, something Professor Mark Bergen says is normal. But there are some pitfalls to be aware of that could make things worse. For me, what's interesting about this inflation is it comes after a pandemic. So you can take those natural stressors 
and I think you put them on steroids. And now what you have is, 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 is kind of and inflation too, on months and months of uncertainty and risk and loss and anxiety and frustration. When you get exhausted and fatigued, you tend to make worse decisions, which also means you may make decisions to, you know, uh, engage in things that wouldn't be as you may have fast food instead of the healthy meal. You may find yourself, uh, you know, having that extra drink, or you may find yourself smoking, or so there is literature that suggests that exhaustion, fatigue may lead you to choices that are less healthy or, or less beneficial. So those are some of the problems, but what are the solutions? Well, I've been speaking to Dr. Elizabeth Dunn, who's Chief Science Officer of the online finance tool Happy Money. She's a co-author of a book by the same name and a psychology professor at the University of British Columbia. Elizabeth, welcome to Talking Business. It's great to have you with us. And we're looking at the psychology of spending. I wonder, first of all, why does spending money make us feel so happy? Well, I think spending money can be a great pleasure because it enables us to get the things that we really desire. Um, and also there's just so much sort of uh, dreaming built up around spending money. Talk to me about the influences on what we buy and, and I guess how we buy and why that's so important for our measure of success and happiness. So I think the purchases that we make can end up playing a pretty important role in the way that we see ourselves. And interestingly, uh, this depends a bit on the type of purchase that we're making. So there's some research showing that uh, buying experiences like trips or concert tickets actually has a bigger impact on our sense of self than buying material things like gadgets or clothes. But has that changed? Um, because we constantly hear, don't we, from businesses that it's about experiences rather than physical things. And it feels like a relatively new concept. It's not about buying stuff anymore. Yeah, I think the cultural dialogue has really shifted toward a greater uh, appreciation of the value of buying experiences. And fortunately, you know, this is one area where um, uh, these the sort of messages actually converge with what we see from happiness research, that people do seem to get more happiness and more lasting happiness from buying experiences than from buying material things. And I wonder then to turn that on its head at the other end of the spectrum, if you don't have a lot of money, are we suggesting that you can't get happiness? First off, just to be clear, money is important for happiness. So richer people do tend to be happier than poorer people, but the relationship is pretty nuanced and it's not all that big. So if you don't have a ton of money, you were certainly not destined to a life of misery. In fact, what we see in our research is that what you do with your money can matter as much as you know, how much money you actually have. I'm really interested as well in what other emotions have a reaction or a response when we buy something, particularly if we're maybe stressed or tired. Uh, talk to me about how that affects our purchases. Yeah, so I mean, shopping while you're stressed or tired may not be a, a great idea. We know that when um, our bandwidth is limited, it can be harder to make good decisions. Um, and so we may end up purchasing something that seems like the easiest or most obvious choice in the moment, but that might not deliver us such lasting happiness. So I would really encourage people, especially if they're buying something that they expect to make them happy, to consider postponing that decision and actually enjoying the time of kind of contemplating different options to um, uh, sort of savor that time of um, imagining what a purchase might be like. Is that why you shouldn't go food or grocery shopping when you're hungry? Right, I would say stay away from, especially, you know, those uh, more <laughs> indulgent aisles of the grocery store when you're, when you're hungry. And the reason we're talking about this is because we know right now inflation around the world is going up pretty quickly. Prices are rising for a lot of people. We're going to have to make some tough decisions about spending. Uh, and I suppose that's where you come in. How do you make the right decisions that will help you financially, but clearly emotionally as well? So I think one really important piece of the puzzle is to consider your future self. So... Uh, our research at Happy Money has demonstrated that people who really focus on their future selves rather than just their immediate needs and wants 
end up with one third as much credit card debt as those people who are more focused on instant gratification. So think about, you know, making purchasing decisions that are going to benefit your future self. And that can help check your spending um, while also uh, perhaps setting yourself up for greater financial self-efficacy and happiness down the road. There is a, a sort of universal criticism of, of young people right now, isn't there, that maybe they can't get on the property ladder, they might not have a secure job, and therefore they prioritise immediate spending, be that you know expensive coffee in the morning or nice lunches out and brunches with friends. Um, and there's a lot of psychology behind that, isn't it, that many young people now assume they will never get their foot on the property ladder or those big jobs and therefore they're taking an immediate gratification now rather than saving it for later. Yeah, and I mean, in our research at Happy Money, what we see is that there are actually plenty of young people that really are prioritizing their future selves. So I think this is maybe a stereotype that we've saddled young people with that isn't completely fair. But at the same time, I think it's important to recognize the value of treats. So, you know, we might not necessarily be able to get some of the really big things that we want, but, you know, we can get a lot of pleasure from a really delicious brunch. So, you know, I think it's worth recognizing that um, some of those major purchases, like buying a house, although it's a dream for many people, what we see is that um, uh, home ownership isn't actually uh, necessarily the key to happiness. And it all comes down to education. Just 57% of Americans consider themselves to be financially literate. And that has huge implications for the money we spend and the purchases we make. That's exactly right. And, you know, I have to say, I, I don't like this term financial literacy because it makes it sound like, you know, it's an individual's fault for not knowing everything about the financial system. Um, and I have to say, as someone with a PhD who works for a financial technology company, I find things, you know, like APRs difficult to understand sometimes. So I think rather than putting this all on the individual and blaming people for not being financially literate, we need to make our financial products much more legible, much more easy to understand. How important is positive thinking, dreaming for those aspirations, aiming for those targets financially in achieving them? Can you believe something to come true? Yeah, so positive thinking is not a panacea that will fix everything and make life be just exactly the way you imagine it could be, right? But I think that positive thinking can be a good first step in helping us recognize that there are specific feasible changes that we can make right now that can get us onto a better path. So as challenging as uh, the financial times are right now, we can recognize, okay, I don't have as much money to spend right now because the cost of living has gone up. So let me think a little bit more carefully about what spending um, choices are really giving me happiness and what could I get rid of? And one of the tips I like to give people is to think about the habitual purchases, the things you kind of buy every day or every week that used to make you happy, but that you no longer even notice. And just try taking a break from them. Try getting out of that habit. And then you can see, is it really making you happy? If so, you can go back to it with some renewed pleasure. If not, you can cut it out of your day-to-day -day spending and save some money. Yeah, and talk to me about that. If someone right now is facing their energy bill going up, their fuel for their car going up, their food prices going up, what do you say to them right now? Yeah, I mean, first of all, this is a serious challenge, right? And people are facing really, really difficult decisions. But again, challenges provide an opportunity to reevaluate our spending. Yeah, here's hoping there are ways to keep that cost down. Um, Elizabeth, it's really good to have you with us on Doing Business this week. Dr. Elizabeth Dunn, thank you. Thank you for having me.